Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today is the first day of the new Gwent Black Sun expansion, which means some brand new cards and a brand new seasonal event that we have never seen before, Trial by Fire. It will replace our entire deck with a new pre-made deck made by CDPR using a bunch of the new cards and a whole deck that is built around them. So it's a great way to test out the new cards before you commit your own dollars and cents or in-game resources, and that way you can see, do you like it, how do the matchups play out, and all of that. Now that does mean that, for the most part, our starting deck doesn't matter too much, however, there are a few little tips and tricks that I want to show with you. So, let's pop into the deck builder for just a second here. So the individual cards that you choose in this event don't make that much of a difference. What does matter, though, is the faction that you choose. So, whichever faction you choose, you're going to get one of those pre-made decks made by CDPR that has all the new cards in them, and also has a deck that is, well, of course, built around those cards. So, if you play Monsters, you're always going to get a Thrive deck. If you play Northern Realms, you're always going to get the same Knight's Grace deck. If you play Skoytel, you're always going to get the same Harmony deck. Skelga will always give you the same Pirates deck. Nilfgaard, the new Cultus. And then for Syndicate, the Pirates slash Tidecloaks. However... It's not quite that simple, at least in the case of Scoitel. There are at least some things that still matter. So, let me show you what that deck will actually look like. Every time, the deck is going to look like this. So, of course, it's going to have a lot of the cards that are from the new expansion. It's uh, notably a deck that is not going to be maxed out with provisions, so not going to have a ton of absolutely amazing stuff, but still certainly some synergies here. So we'll see, of course, a bunch of Harmony, including a bunch of the new Harmony cards. And Harmony, of course, means that whenever you play a unit that is from Scoia'tael, if you do not yet control a Scoia'tael unit that has that same category, like, say, you play a beast and you don't yet control any beasts, then all your Harmony units are going to get boosted. So that's the idea. Everything should support that in one way or another. If it doesn't have Harmony, then that means you're probably using it as a finisher. And if you're looking for more details on the new cards, heads up that a few days ago did a very in-depth analysis of all the new cards for every faction, not only just what their abilities do, but when and where and how you actually want to use them. So I talk way more about that stuff in that video if that is of interest to you. But one thing to mention, at least for Scoia'tael here, is that on the prologue of the scenario, it will spawn in Late Guardian Dawn Aspect to this row and set its power to the number of Scoitel units with unique primary categories in your starting deck. You might say to yourself, okay, well then maybe I'm just going to get a whole bunch of unique starting categories in my starting deck and uh, going to make that prologue amazing. Not exactly. Uh, what happens is that first, when you use this, uh, when you play this scenario, it will initially set the power of that card based on the number of unique uh, primary categories you have from Scoia'tael units in your starting deck. So I think it might be 11 is the maximum. So we'll start out as an 11. However, as soon as it does that, it will then adjust that value and realize, oh, wait, no, but you're not using what was initially your starting deck. No, right now you're actually using this new deck that we gave to you. And that one, I believe, has seven, yeah, seven unique primary categories in it. So it's going to momentarily look like you got an 11 on the prologue, but it's actually going to set down to a 7 and stay there. So, uh, no, you can't uh, find a, a way to eke out a few more points through that route. However, it does mean that if, if you try to meme like crazy, like I did initially, and just go with an entirely neutrals deck and have zero unique primary categories of Scoia'tael units in your starting deck, then uh, it will start with this prologue by setting the power of the card to zero. And that means it will immediately get destroyed. And it won't even have time to adjust itself back up to a 7 because uh, the card has already gone to your graveyard. So don't do that. Just don't do that. That's the one thing you need to bear in mind. The other thing to consider is that technically speaking, not only will your cards, no matter what you put in here, get turned into the cards you see here. This is what the starting or what the replacement pre-made Scoia'tael deck looks like. Your leader ability will get replaced as well. So rather than Mahawk and Forge in this case you would end up getting, as you can probably imagine, Call of Harmony, which is the Harmony Leader ability. So, that makes sense. It's going to be the most effective Leader ability, yes. However, there is a little catch there. A little bit of a bonus, if you will. Because if you do play with a deck that is anything other than the one that you get transformed into, there are actually, 
as you may already know, contracts for that will give you additional reward points after you reach a certain number of wins with a certain leader ability. And so I was curious to see, does that count toward the, uh, the leader ability you have at the beginning of the match? Or does it consider the leader ability that you have once you switch into it with the pre-made deck? And uh, I couldn't confirm with the one that we get with the pre-made deck because I've already gotten 100 Harmony wins. But I have seen that uh, whichever one you start off with, you will still get that counted towards your contracts. If you win with, uh, for example, in this case, Mahakam Forge, even once you get transformed into a Call of Harmony deck, this will still count toward your Mahakam Forge contracts. So it's a little bit of a bonus you can get there if there's a specific type of leader ability that you don't really like or you feel like is a little bit weaker or you just need to get more wins on that in order to complete a contract, then that's a way that you can basically get a free way to get wins toward that leader ability without actually using that leader ability. So it's a not a huge deal, but that's a little bit of a bonus if you're trying to absolutely min-max and find a way to complete contracts that you might not otherwise be able to complete all that easily. So with that being said, let's go see it in action. All right, so coming up against Nilfgaard here, and we'll go first. All right, so our entire deck here is getting replaced with a new pre-made deck that is going to be based entirely on the new Harmony archetype. So the cards in our starting deck technically don't matter. In fact, even our leader ability gets overridden. Just curious to see if that would happen, and it does. So we will be full-blown Harmony, and we do have Mysteries of Locked Fiend. That's obviously the new scenario, so we're very much going to want to play that. And other than that, we want to try to mix and match our Harmony cards that we have as many different types of Harmony units as possible. So we have several Dryads, that is, uh, and several Beasts as well. Probably want to swap out a Dryad. Granted, we'd like to have enough Poison to actually remove something. Gaining a tree and though is definitely a nice thing. Probably don't want to have both Half-Elf Hunters in the same round. Probably don't want to have both of you guys either. Okay, so. I think what we'll want to do here is generally the idea with Harmony is you get as much Harmony on the board as quickly as possible in the round. And then over time, it's going to build up. So uh, that means I think the new Antharian card is going to be the best one on your first turn because it's Harmony itself. And then there were some concerns, I think, when the card came out pacing-wise, how this would play. I think it's totally fine it, as long as you play it first. Because, uh, <laughs> guys, I know point slams are common nowadays, but have we forgotten what an engine is? It's an engine and it creates one more engine. So if you play it first, then you can immediately use its order ability when, as soon as you get your next card down. So uh, either what we're going to do is we're going to turn another unit into a double harmony card or we're going to add harmony to a card that would not otherwise have harmony now we probably want to uh again as we said before go all in on the harmony at the beginning here so the other thing you gen generally want to do with harmony is mix and match so you have as many different types of harmony units as possible so you know only one or two beasts one or two dryads one or two dwarf or there actually aren't any harmony dwarves but elves so on and so forth so however if you do have multiple of the same type in your hand simultaneously and you actually think you're going to play them in the same round you want to try to play one type right after the other because this is not going to proc our harmony when we play this next uh beast harmony engine let's go for the damage here and i suppose we might as well add the harmony to you there's the infusion might even want to use our stratagem on you to get you boosted so you're not going to so easily get destroyed the reason why we did two beasts in a row here is because this is not going to proc harmony when we play this beast, but it gives us another harmony engine on the board that will get boosted when we play our next harmony card. So uh, this will we'll get two boosts when we play our next harmony card, as long as it's not a beast, so we're definitely not going to play you. But uh, whereas if we had played all of our other harmony types and then finished with this beast, then we wouldn't have gotten the uh, harmony proc at all in that case. So technically it... The math does work out in our favor there. And that's similarly what we're going to want to likely do here is once again, if you have a Harmony card, if you have multiple Harmony cards of the same variety, and we do with a couple of Dryad Rangers, then you would like to use those early on and play them one right after the other. So, oh, we also have the Poison from the Weeping Willow. So yeah, we technically had more Poison than we needed here. So I think we are going to wait to play Mysteries of Lock Fiend in a subsequent round, probably. Uh, so I think next is the Dryad Rangers. And technically, you're the most dangerous. It's 
So our entire deck, let's take a quick look here, should be composed primarily of Harmony cards, or if they aren't Harmony cards, then they're at least Scoia'tael units that can proc other Harmony cards, so that could destroy this Dried Ranger. So this, if we play another Dried Ranger now, will not proc any Harmonies, but it gives us multiple Harmony engines on the board. Uh, I mean, same could be said of playing any other Harmony engine, yes, but this basically means we're getting one more boost when we play any subsequent a harm or Scoitel type of unit for the first time. So it's a little hard to explain in the abstract, but trust me when I say that it is a little more valuable for that reason. Now this one might also go down, which is actually, if we only, or if we had waited to play this, that might not have been a bad thing. It does get destroyed, unfortunately, from the random damage. Uh, Cause then that would have meant that we could have proc harmony a second time from Dryads when we played this, but of course it was a, 25% chance of that happening and didn't know if it was going to play out that way or not. So one thing to consider here is that the tree ends, yes, would proc harmony. It is a harmony engine as well. However, the poison, not super valuable right now because we don't have enough to remove a, a second card right now. Could go for the shield because they do have some damage still with the crossbowman, but we could maybe just go half elf hunter here. I think finisher is going to be our Chameleon and or our Pyrotechnician, probably Pyrotechnician and then Chameleon. So let's go here. Rock all the harmonies. So we should have a slow start to the rounds as we're just getting our uh, harmony engines on the board setting up. But then over time toward the end of the round as everything is getting boosted. No, not the resets. Okay, so I've not yet seen what cards are in the, the preset decks for other factions, but obviously I suppose can expect some control from Nilfgaard, including the resets here. So that does stink, because we did put the double harmony on this Dryad Hawk, so it was getting pretty big. So we actually, we could go Pyrotech, or rather, uh, we could go Chameleon now, because the Chameleon's order ability allows us to play it another time, so it's basically like a double finisher, which is just absolutely amazing. I think this card is going to be really a huge, huge addition for harmony for Squirtel. But, uh, how are we doing pacing wise here? This should be enough with the additional points on our harmony cards when we play it. And so it'll turn to <laughs> a machine is what the chameleon does. It turns into a category that you don't yet control. So in this case, yes, that happened to be a machine, which is kind of funny, but uh, it works. So it guarantees the harmony proc. Then we'll play pyrotechn technician. And uh, oh, technically, mm. Yeah, the problem here was actually both of these cards had order abilities that we wanted to use. So yeah, neither of them are perfect as a finisher for that reason. The Lake Guardian Dust as Dusk aspect is potentially a uh, a great finisher, but we'd like to save it for a future round as a point slam, because that is one of the, the weaknesses of Harmony, is that it takes a long time for it to ramp up, and this card can make up for that because it tr triggers its Harmony while it's still in our hand and in our deck. So we'd like for this to be something that we can use in round uh, two or round three. So I think we we may actually be finishing with the Weeping Willow, which does kind of stink because it means we're losing some Harmony procs, but I mean, it's either one more turn of Harmony from Weeping Willow or it's four damage from Pyrotechnician, and I think that's actually preferable. And we use this. It's going to reduce the Chameleon's base power, but it's going to boost all of our Harmony engines once again. Now it's a Relic. So it loses one point directly on itself, but it gains us one, two, three, four, five points when we play it. Okay, now they're going to lock. Okay, Fire Tension, of course, we knew it was going to get locked. Then we would have said maybe it wasn't worth doing that. But uh, we can still actually go Weeping Willow and then finish with another Chameleon on our next turn. They're going to use some leader ability charges. This is getting a little bit big on this Magni Division. Uh, yeah, pacing-wise, they want to force us to keep on playing here. And we can. I mean, this will definitely be the last turn that we want to take. So I think we'll go Weeping Willow. I think we will. And normally the poison is better, assuming you have enough poison to actually remove something. We don't right now. So we'll actually go Melee Row for the shield. And then we'll use you. Once again, lose one point directly on the Chameleon. But because we have now one or double harmony here, so one, two, three, four, five, six harmony cards, gaining, or harmony procs, gaining six points, losing one, for net of five, so that's still a really strong order ability from a four provision cost bronze unit, which is just totally amazing. 
So now, I mean, we could use the Dusk Aspect, but we don't really want to do that now. And fortunately, they'll pass here, which is just in the nick of time. So we'll win round one. And we saved our Point Slam and our Scenario. Okay, so we drew into Percival, who is the Harmony Engine at uh, built-in to Harmony, so that's great. We also have Mirlega, who is not a Harmony card, is meant to primarily be a, a Harmony procking card, and if you combine it with the pair uh, Etrial, we get more damage, but we don't have them right now. Question is, are we going to want to try to push for uh, a 2-0 here? Which, we are a card down, we do have our scenario, we do have a somewhat boosted Late Guardian Dusk aspect, which is nice. Million is a nice finisher, as as is this. Uh, mm. it's close. It's close. Let's see. Is there anything that we really want that we don't yet have in hand? I mean, our hand is pretty much as good as it gets outside of Water of Brocklon is would be a great round starter for us to get two Dried Fledglings on the board. So it's a double Harmony, harmony Engine right off the bat. But I think we might be able to outpace them. The Nilfgaard scenario, I think, is not great for pacing. It's It can build carryover, so I think we might still even win a card down. I mean, the, I really like at least the looks of the Scoitel scenario, so I think we can pull this off. We might, however, want to play Percival first. Because he's double harmony now if he gets locked. This is obviously going to backfire on us. But he's double Harmony, so any subsequent Harmony cards that we play are really going to help him, or unique Scoia'tael cards that we play are really going to benefit him. And the Mysteries of Lock Fiend, you actually may not want to start the round with it, because it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's final play. Yeah, this is scenario set up for them right now with the Deacon. Really didn't see anything in terms of the new cards in round one from them, purely just damage and control. But, uh... Because round three, I be or chapter two, I should say, is spawn and play convergence, which is a bronze Scoitel card with a primary category that we don't yet control, basically like a chameleon. It's a finisher, so that means you want to have other harmony cards on the board before you do that. So also, not to mention, with our leader ability, we can actually proc both, or we can proc this scenario very quickly because our leader ability procs it as well. So I think what we'll do is now we'll probably go Searsa. And, yeah. Yeah, we'll go Searsa. Get the damage. Get the boost. And then we have two Harmony cards remaining between Lake Guardian Dusk Aspect and our Leader Ability, because, as I was saying, that does count. Chameleon is not Harmony, so that means we will probably look to play Mysteries of Lock Fiend next. So I saw a lot of people, when this card first got released, the Eternal Eclipse Deacon, people were unimpressed by it. I know it doesn't look all that amazing. It is absolutely necessary to set up the Nilfgaard scenario. So uh, I know it, it might not have looked all that impressive, but uh, if you're looking to play the new Nilfgaard cards, it is absolutely essential. So I think people are overlooking that a bit and uh, may just not fully understand how the Nilfgaard scenario works just yet. But speaking of scenarios, I think now is when we are looking to do this. So, we'll use you, and... Excuse me? Oh, wow! Okay, I know why that happened. It destroyed our Late Guardian Dusk aspect. I know why, hold on. Uh, let's go... We'll go Leader Builder here. I know why that happened. It's technically because I memed. It's technically because before our starting deck got replaced, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're wondering why as well, because before our starting deck got replaced by this new pre-made deck that we get in this event, I had made our deck entirely neutral cards just for the memes, full of wolf packs and what have you. No, don't do that, though. Actually, uh, Chameleon is probably still a safe... Mm, well, when I mean, you are a Harmony card, even after you've been... Uh, Actually, 
I'm not sure if, with the Prophet Lock, do we still count as a Harmony card and trigger Mysteries of Lock's Union, or does that get locked as well, in which case we don't trigger the last chapter? I think we're playing Chameleon either way, just to play it safe. But uh, to finish that thought, to finish that thought, um, <laughs> so I made our entire starting deck entirely neutrals and like Wolfpack and other atrociously awful cards. What are you talking about, Lids? Wolfpack is best card in the game. Yes, yes. <laughs> Except, uh, so it looks like the prologue of Mysteries of Lock Fiend is actually based on the number of starting unique types of Scoy Tell cards we have in our initial deck before the conversion takes place. And that's why it immediately destroyed our prologue, which would normally be one of, if not the best prologues of all the new scenarios. So I was a little surprised at first to see it give us a fat zero, but uh, we might still be fine even with that here. So I'm curious to see how this plays out because uh, Dusk Aspect is now definitely a Harmony card, which means it'll proc the last chapter, which will give us the Convergence, which will give us a Bronze Koi Telling Unit with a category that we do not yet control. And so it is a pre-existing Scoitel unit. I was curious when this card came out if it was just going to be like a chameleon that sort of takes shape of whatever type of unit we need or if we actually get to choose amongst existing cards. It's definitely going to be that archer. Do we have a good target? We do. We do. Melee row. Hit you. Spawn in some stuffs. Get the harmony boost. So we have a huge, huge amount of tempo from this scenario, which is something that you don't often say about scenarios, and I think that's one of the reasons why this, uh, this Scoytel scenario is going to be really strong. I really like it, and this is, bear in mind, after we completely bricked <laughs> the prologue because I went way too hard on the memes. So uh, that actually tells us that it does, your starting deck actually does matter for Scoytel at least. You might as well load up with as many possible starting categories for Scoytel units as possible. Throw in things like constructs, uh, things like uh, tree ends. I mean, that's you should probably have one in your harmony decks anyway. But even if you aren't actually going to end up playing those cards, you're still going to benefit from them. So uh, that means you can just absolutely load your deck with the setup for that uh, Scoytel scenario prologue. So that that actually makes Scoytel probably even stronger still. And there you see it. Even with us having bricked the prologue, we annihilated them 2-0. All right, so going up against Syndicate here, and we'll go first. Okay, so we started off with our Water Broccolon, which is a great round starter, but uh, no scenario and no way to get our scenario right now, so that is a notable weakness. We also have a lot of Dryads in our hand. We'd like to kind of mix it up and have a little bit of different types of uh, Scoitel units. So, I mean, Chameleon gives us a lot of flexibility there. Percival is obviously a great engine for us, though we do have two Pyrotechnicians. We can only trigger the Harmony from one of those dwarves once, so might as well dump that one. And Cavalier Adept, other Pyrotechnician, probably get rid of one of them. And Double Antherian is not great, but it does set up a lot of additional Harmony, functionally giving us multiple Percivals. So, thinking thing here is the lack of the scenario. We can't rely on that. We don't know if we're going to get it for a subsequent round, so if we're planning out what our win conditions are for round one versus two slash three, it might need to be Antherians in round one, and then, or maybe just one of them, and then save Percival for a different round, or actually, Water Brocklon, I should say, uh, as our, our starter in this round. So yeah, because this is two Harmony procs per turn, Fincy is going to be huge. And I'm not sure that we have a way of stopping her. We have one poison and only one poison, right? Yeah, don't have a second round of poison. That is unfortunate, because she is going to be just an absolutely ginormous engine for them. But, uh... Okay, it's definitely going to be... I think we're saving Percival, because he might need to be our key card for the next round. So we'll go in Therian then. Not yet sure as to whether we're going to want two of them in this round. Of course, the second one will not trigger Harmony, but it does set up another Harmony engine, which is nice. It does give us long-term value. Do have some damage. Can, of course, boost this back up if we would like to do that. 
Mm. I mean, if we are playing another Antherian in this round, then this is the turn to do it. Yes, we will. But... If we go this route, that wasn't going to trigger Harmony anyway, but we should still use this on somebody. Uh, turning somebody into a double Harmony, and I guess we'll do it on you. Assuming they don't have... I mean, they might have five damage. They very well could, actually. Um, in which case, this will be a target. But I was trying to not have anything super duper tall. Okay, Vincy. Not so surprisingly, continues to get bigger. Okay, now we should use this ability before we play anything else here. So, technically, next we'd want to go for more Harmony, which would mean Half-Elf Hunter. But before we do, as I said, uh, we'll go on this Antherian. It is low, but it will get up to a 5 after this. Should make it relatively difficult for them to remove it, and... Given how we know they have, I think they'll have decent damage. We should probably use Tactical Advantage on this Half-Elf Hunter as that will be, yes, likely the last Harmony card that we play in this round. I also didn't acknowledge that we have a Lake Guardian Dusk Aspect, which is another great card for us. But that's another one we want to save for round two or round three because it triggers its Harmony while it's in our hand. So we'll gain value even without playing it. So the longer we wait, the better it becomes. Okay, Pearl Diver there. Gonna take some time before they can capitalize on all these coins, but I mean, Bincy is is the key here because without Bincy, they would not be getting any immediate points from these coins, but they definitely are now. So I mean, we might want this round to be a little bit on the short side, to be honest. Also, how we might be able to destroy you with Pyrotechnician. Miralega is absolutely not enough by itself. It's basically all up to if Pyrotechnician hits you or not. Uh, I mean, we're into finisher territory. We're not playing a Harmony unit here. It's not going to be Percival. It's not going to be Dusk Aspect. It's a question of do we use Chameleon or do we save that? I think we'll go you. Trigger the Harmonies, and that might even be the last card that we play. Not even stick around to use this order ability. It's an option if we do go that far, but... Yeah, they're just going for the thinning here. It is hard to predict just how much value they can get out of Vinci here. And now on their next turn, they're going to get six coins out of Pearl Diver. So we will likely see them spend another round of Treasure Huntress or find a different way to spend. So they're getting the full value out of this amount of coins. That means at least six points on Vinci. Gets them up to 44. We could remove you with Power Technician as well. Hitting Bincy doesn't really make much of a difference. Sewer Raiders, I mean, eh. Yes. Yes, we will. Play our Chameleon. Trigger the Harmonies, use this, and that is not really who we wanted to hit. I mean, again, we obviously couldn't control it, but... Would have preferred... Either of you would have been the preferred targets. And now our problem is... Uh, the only way we can trigger Harmony from here on out would be if we went with the Percival play. Or Leader ability, which we definitely don't want to do. Because Percival at the end of the round is probably not something we want to be relying on. He will trigger a Harmony, yes, but he's a two-point per turn Harmony engine, so he's a card you want to start with, not finish with. And we already have a Triad, we already have two Beasts. And a Beast here as well. The thing is, it doesn't give us much value out of the Chameleon. Is this reason enough to keep on pushing here? Even if we're not getting the procs from you guys. I mean, I am wary of the long-term potential they have, but maybe we can still make this work. At least threaten the removal there, even though we know we can't actually do that removal. And the key thing here is just that the Chameleon spam is worth decent value to us, and if we feel like we need to play one more turn, then we'd go Force Whisperer. Uh, I mean, I guess we could have gone Force Whisperer there and gone for the uh, Range Row Vitality. Contrast Candle does give them a bit of carryover, and it does give them points on Pincy, 
even on deploy. Yeah, so how many coin generators per turn do they have now? Uh, I did not even realize they've done it this many times on Vinci. At this point, they might have just about guaranteed max coin generation every turn. This is what we didn't want. We did not want them to get to this point where they can spend to their heart's content every single turn and uh, still get uh, get Vinci, uh boosted up with all their coin generation, max them out. So I think we do, oh, and even if we pass, yeah, if we pass here, we do still force them to play another card, right? Because even though they will get this coin generation, since they're maxed out, it doesn't do anything. It's not even going to boost Vinci. So they do need to play something. I think we do need to pass on this turn for that reason. So what we really want is, probably should have passed earlier in round one, gone for a longer round two. Would have been the preferred way to do it. Curious to see if they have Flinder's Crew, which is their big epic card, which is very sensitive to the length of rounds and how far they go in round two in particular is something that can set it up more for a more effective round three, but then in doing so means they'll have less time to benefit from that card in round three, and it's a card that benefits from a longer round. So they will win round one, but they do take an extra card to do so. And they did get some carryover potentially through Conjurer's Candle giving them a spender. Is that going to be reason enough for them to try to Keep on going here in round two, possibly. As I said, if they're trying to set up Flinder's Crew, they do have additional reason to do that. We have almost nothing with Harmony here. So I think let's dump Catwitcher Adept, and we'll see if we can get either something else with Poison or a Scenario. That's pretty important. Uh, let's get rid of Pyrotechnician. And Chameleon is a finisher. This is kind of awkward. I mean, we could, I suppose... I mean, this is not bad in a short round, actually, if they do try to push hard, although we have Percival, which is also something we'd like to have in the long round. Tempo-wise, Dusk Aspect is potentially our best option, but it hasn't quite had enough time to get boosted up to the place where we want it to be just yet. If it's a throwaway, it's probably the Force Whisperer. Yes, we'd like to get enough. Yep, they are playing. We'd like to get enough. And they're going scenario. Okay, they're going all in. So honestly, in some ways, a good thing that they did this right off the bat, because the messaging is clear. We we know they're going big here. So I think that means we can safely assume that we can go with Percival, and we probably will end up playing our scenario as well, potentially. But uh, we will likely want to wait for that a little bit longer. So let's do this, and remember that Gadron gives them damage when they generate coins is the deal here Percival does have armor and is going to generate two coins per turn at least so it is going to be difficult for them to destroy him but certainly not impossible as we saw in round one that is what they're trying to do is just generate a ridiculous number of coin generators and tell you what we might even want to go leader ability here as well but that does technically mean uh, that was one of our Harmony cards. We have two in our hand here. We've not yet played our scenario, so... But they, hey, they are going Flinders Cruise. They are absolutely all in in this round, then. So, again, at least they're being very clear about their intentions. We don't really have any reason to hold back here because they're going all in. So the reason why leader ability there was somewhat questionable was because I was hoping that we might be able to save Dusk Aspect as a point slam in our short round three. But uh, that might not be a luxury we can afford to have, especially because if we play our scenario, which we should do now, we need all of our remaining Harmony cards in order to trigger it all the way through. So, uh, and otherwise, our leader ability might have been a way to save us one of those Harmony cards, that being Dusk Aspect for the next round.
Okay, so at the moment, we're outpacing them. It does take them a little bit of time to set their stuff up. They have the coin generation now to make them dangerous. We can move MK to the melee row, which I think is almost certainly the play here. We, of course, want to play our our harmony engines early in the round. So that does make sense. And I think that's worth more, definitely worth more to us than the two damages, because we're not going to remove anything with two damage. And this is a powerful card for sure. So let's go range row in that case. Move you down. Trigger our harmonies. And now we are on the chapter one, which means every time we play a Skoy Tell card, we're getting slightly more boostage. Okay, Matza. Ooh, making the round go longer. I'm not really sure that's something we wanted to see. We do get another Harmony card, but we did already have another Dryden in our hand, so it's, it's not ideal. So technically, it, it does mean we may, if the round is short enough, have the ability to save Late Guardian Dusk Aspect as a round three finisher. So in that sense, might not have been bad. Technically speaking... Despite us probably wanting to play Harmony as early as possible, on this occasion, getting one more turn out of a Chameleon finisher when we have one, two, three, four times in which we can uh, get boosted per turn every time we click on the Chameleon order, that is worth more than the one point per turn we're getting from the Fledgling. So we should do this next. And it is enough pacing-wise for us to catch them as well. Out of curiosity, what you turn into? A dwarf? Okay, it's not like we're about to play dwarf, so that's fine. And now they are breaking out the big stuff. That Was that Gadron's ability? I assume it was. I think so. This is probably going to get destroyed. Although they probably should have gone after the chameleon, chameleon to be honest. Uh, they have enough coins to put that on numerous cards, which makes me very nervous. They don't have many turns left here to benefit from it, but they are generating... Oh? Okay. Not enough to be too much of a threat, at least not yet. Okay, so now we are looking to go, I think, the Dryad Fledgling. And that will trigger the last round of our scenario. And then after that, uh, well, that'll give us a, a unit of a variety that we don't yet control. And then we'll get something else out of Chameleon as well. So let's go here. And here we go. I think we'd... Let's see, can we benefit from... This is probably the most valuable... Well, actually, you know, you can be worth a fair bit. We can destroy a Flinder's crew. We should definitely do that. We should definitely do that. That is definitely worth it. And then we do this. And trigger harmonies again. Okay, so the fact that we were able to shut down a Flinder's crew which lowers the power of their horde abilities, I think is definitely nice. Now, next turn, we'll have to see if they can catch us. They obviously believe that they can. Saul will get boosted depending on how many coins they have at the end of their turn. Is it enough for them, though? It is not. So we have two cards to spare here. And we'll win round two. With our finisher in hand, and they have realized their mistake, and it appears that they have rage quit. Yes, there is the disconnection, and that means we will take the win. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And they'll go first. Okay, so we started off with Late Guardian Dusk Aspect, which is a good finisher. But we'd probably like to save that, because it will build up in power over the course of three rounds. We notably do not have our scenario. And let's see, do we have duplicates of a certain type of Harmony card slash general Skoytel unit? type we do we have several elves several dryads several beasts so we'd like to try to mix it up a little bit more like maybe dump you okay, you are technically a a new type of card we don't yet have so it's not that there's a scenario okay so that's good so yeah we want to try to maximize the number of distinct scoyatel tags things like beasts gnomes elves humans dryads so on and so forth 
because the more of those you have in your hand at any one given point in time means the more total boosts you have that you can potentially get over the course of the round. So, Percival at Harmony 2 is naturally our best Harmony engine. However, we do have double Antherian, and Antherian may only have one Harmony itself, but we aren't triggering Harmony on our first turn anyway, and it can give us one more Harmony on one of our other units, so I do kind of like this. And especially if you have multiple the same type of unit in a Harmony deck, you generally want to play them one right after the other, so that way you're basically loading up on all of your beasts, and uh, only then do you move on to the next type of unit. So although if we're trying to play Percival in this round, we do want to play him early, I think we still go Antherian first. And I do think that Nilfgaard, being Nilfgaard, has some control in this event with the pre-made deck. And so if we were to just drop Percival right off the bat, then there's always the chance that they could come in and do something to lock him or shut him down in some other way, reset him maybe even. That would obviously be something that they would wait to do. But I think now we will go Antherian number two. So two Harmony Beasts on the board. We can double Harmony you by using this Infuse ability. And technically we should do that as early as possible. Because once again, we want to build up that Harmony as quickly as possible and early as possible. Okay, now they're getting some damage. They're going after the two Harmony per turn card, which is going to naturally be more difficult for them to uh, d destroy because it's, it's going to get stronger more quickly. Then again, we're going to return the favor here because we're about to trigger these harmonies. And if we are thinking that this is the round we want to play Percival, then we should play him now. He'll trigger both these harmonies twice and then he's another two harmony card. So I think we, given how we have the scenario and we have Dusk Aspect in hand, which is obviously two of our best cards, I think we can... Go the, go the long-term Harmony Engine route here. That should pay off for us. So the other downside of the cards we had in our hand was Dried Ranger gives us poison, but we did not get another poison card, I don't think. No, it would have to either be another Dried Ranger or our Treant's Harmony card, which also, depending on which row you play it, has a poison ability. So next we'll go for more Harmony cards, like Dried Ranger, like Half-Elf Hunter. And then we'll probably start looking to play some of the cards that do not have Harmony, but will be distinct tags. We've not yet played a Scoytel Witcher or a Scoytel Dwarf or whatever we happen to get from Chameleon. So those will be ways to guarantee that we trigger those Harmonies. So again, that's why you play the Harmony first, and then you finish with those other types of cards. Okay. The initiate it does take a fair bit of setup. Now, what I wonder here is, although we know, we know that we don't have enough poison to remove something, we might be able to scare them into thinking that we can. I mean, it does come with a little bit of damage as well. So I suppose between the two damage from the ranger and some bleed from the depth, we might be able to destroy perhaps you. I mean, this is too big for us to take out. Likely the case with Nausicaa Sergeant as well. We could potentially get rid of your armor. But I think it's going to be... You're the most natural engine for us to go after. I'm curious who they try to target here. Because whoever they use this ability on, they're going to want to try to destroy. But... I mean, this is the easiest one to destroy right now because it's only three power. But then again, it is an engine that will get bigger over time. So they will want to act quickly here. Okay, yeah, that's just a point slam. But it is a soldier, so they will get the random damage from the crossbowman, which happens to hit the card they were going for. Unless they gave this a cultist tag, but they haven't. So uh, now let's go one more round of harmony. And I'm deliberately loading up a bit in the melee row. Because 
That's where we can get the bleed from the Cat Witcher Adept, which I think is what we're going to want to do on this guy right here. And Harmony usually starts slow because we need to set up all of our Harmony engines, but then we have multiple cards that are getting boosted by two every turn. So that is definitely going to pay off over time, and they can only answer so many of them, even if they are Nilfgaard. Now they're hitting some of our cards with uh, armor as well. Leader ability charges here. Oh yeah, they're pacing-wise. They might have been in trouble if they hadn't done that. Although now we're not really going to be able to remove you, I don't think. Or at least it's going to be much more difficult. Ah, uh, and they get Alfin out. Oh, and he's one of the ones that received the cultist tag. Okay. So after it's summoned, if you control three more cultists, damage the lowest power infused enemy unit by three, which would have been potentially a way to destroy this Dried Ranger, although they did not have enough cultists on the board. It's just you. And since they infused Athen, him as well, so they wanted to wait a little bit before they did that, ideally. Like, we're still going Cat Witcher Adept here, and we no longer have a great target for the bleed because it's unlikely, unlikely that we'll have enough time for that to actually take you out. Technically speaking, if they don't play here, we're tied at 49, which is unfortunate. Pacing-wise, would have liked to have had one more point there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Oh, well, I suppose they're getting the boost from Magni Division as well. I mean, we'll go down a card to win round one. That's fine. It's just, you know, wanted to play this to get more time for the, the bleed. But then again, pacing-wise, was something else better? Well, I suppose Pirate Technician was not. Chameleon wasn't really either. Only thing better would have been... Wait, Guardian, but we definitely don't want to use that yet. So I think what we'll do here is we'll just go Pyrotechnician. That's, uh, it'll proc all of our harmonies, which will give us more than enough points. But uh, it doesn't have quite the same finishing potential that the Chameleon has, so this would probably be overkill here, and we, I mean, we could have also used Leader Ability on our last turn, but... I think we'll make do here, as is. Okay, so we'll win round one. And uh, as great as Chameleon is, I mean, getting two of them is also it's just tons of finishers, but at the same time, we don't have much in the way of Harmony cards here. We have two, which would be exactly enough to trigger our scenario, but I think given how we have two Chameleons, Cat Witcher Adept is probably not all that needed right now. Trained Hawk is nice in that it's another Harmony engine, not one of our better ones, but we could consider, could potentially even consider pushing here, even while a card down, because uh, Mysteries of Lockfiend is very strong and good for tempo, whereas... The Nilf Nilfgaard scenario, less so the case. Now, Chameleon, without that many Harmony cards on the board, though, ah, I mean, it would have been better than Pirate Te Technician for sure, but I was really hoping for one more Harmony card there. Um, if we had a second Chameleon, I would have strongly considered still pushing. If we drew into another Harmony card, like, I mean, certainly Waters of Broccolon, or uh, Seersa, Half-Elf Hunter, Weeping Willow really anything with Harmony, I would have considered it. I mean, we do still have our leader ability as well, I suppose. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? It still might be. Because Nilfgaard scenario is not great for pacing, and it does give them some carryover, so if we let them go into round three, then it's not great for us. So I think we can actually outpace them here. I think we can actually outpace them here. Now, we want to make sure that we have at least enough Harmony cards that we can still trigger our scenario here, but we have one, two, and three from our leader ability. That's one thing to bear in mind as well. So we have our leader ability. They use all their leader ability charges, so we do have a, a distinct advantage in that sense. Is that worth one card less in our hand? It, honestly, it might be. Because see, now we're forcing them forcing them into using their cultists in round two when they... Uh, it's going to be awkward for them. I think it's going to be awkward for them. So... Technically, Mysteries of Loch Fien, you want to time it such that you're triggering that last chapter right around the end of the round, because the last chapter gives you a Harmony finisher, and so we want to have as many Harmony engines on the board as possible when that happens. So I think for that reason, we probably do 
play one more harmony card first with the train talk and that means we're committing to both lake guardian dusk aspect and leader building this round i mean we're basically deciding we're going all in here but i think that's fine i think we can make that work still we'll go melee row for the damage here we'll proc that harmony there and then next turn will be mysteries of lock fiend they might try to infuse this trained hawk because it's a little bit low at the moment. So it is certainly possible, or at least more feasible, for them to mess with that. And maybe get their cultist swarm chains going. Okay, now it's just a point slam. There is the infusion, as expected. So I think either way, we're looking at Mysteries of Lock Fiend here. The question, primarily, as this will spawn in a 7 Power Lake Guardian Dawn Aspect, which is one of the other reasons why it's decent in a short round, is that's not bad tempo. But uh, we could now consider using our leader ability to boost this up, at least get it up to a 4. Because that way, it's a little bit harder for them to mess with it, especially because their gold, uh, I think it's specifically the gold cultists that they have, have that ability that I think we saw with Affin, where if they control enough cultists when they play it, there is the scenario. Okay, so it's a scenario showdown in that case, as it ought to be. Yeah, if they play one of those gold cultists that got infused at the beginning of the game, those deal three damage when they play them, to whatever unit has, or whatever the lowest unit has. The lowest unit that we have with an infusion, so it would be you. Um, so we want to make sure that you're above four power, basically. But now we're going to play Lake Guardian Dusk Aspect. And this will be a pretty sweet finisher for us. It will also trigger the last scenario, or last chapter of our scenario, giving us another finisher. And then all of these guys are finishers as well. Technically speaking, Given how we can play Chameleon multiple times with its order ability, it may actually be preferable to play this first, because this will still get the Harmony boost while it's in hand, so this actually is better in this situation. Boost up the Harmony cards, including Lake Guardian Dusk Aspect. We can still use this order ability more often. It's a gnome, apparently, the Chameleon this time. Okay, so they're doing... A lot of infusions here. Profit, ooh, is not really what we want to see. We can play Pyrotechnician, though. And that's, I mean, the order ability is not all that important. What is important is that it's just a dwarf, which they can't lock. So it is going to trigger Harmony. So we can do that. It'll trigger our existing Harmonies. I think. Did it not? It still should have. I mean, surely they can't lock the fact that it's a dwarf. Even when they do the pre-locking from Profit, I don't think so, but... Now we can use Chameleon again. And that will boost up all of our Harmony Engines once again. And so because we can do this every turn, that's why it still benefits us. We'll play this a little bit on the earlier side. Then we draw into... Hmm. Dryad. If it was a unique category for us, it would have been not bad. Would have been uh, another Harmony finisher. We would have been fine with that, really. But we do already control Triad, so this is really just three base power and not much else. We can't really benefit from the poison because we only have one round of poison here. So we might actually deliberately play it in the range row now. And then at least we get one turn worth of Harmony procs out of it. Actually, potentially more if they need to continue to play to try to keep pace with us. So I guess... That's how we go about doing it. It is still going to get boosted by one from our scenario. But then we can play Chameleon again. It's going to continue to get weakened every time we do this. But because we have one less power on you when we play you, but we're increasing, what, one, two, three Harmony Engines, we lose one point, we gain three points. On net, it's a two-point play. Okay, Master of Ceremonies is mostly just a point slam when you play it, although it will trigger... Is this the last scenario? It is the last scenario. The last chapter of the scenario. Okay, but we've been holding on to our big finisher, of course. And so you can still go one more time, right? You can. Okay. 
So now we just give some vitality, and we should give it to someone who's probably on the lower end power-wise, which is definitely not any of these guys. Maybe we go Chameleon first, and we... Normally, you'd want to play your Harmony Engines before you use Chameleon, because Chameleon is the thing that triggers the Harmonies, but because this gets boosted from our hand, we can do this first, and it'll still work. So you do that. Then let's give this the Vitality, because it is a lower power card, and again, didn't really want to have this be the card that we drew into, because we couldn't really get much value, but it, hey, at least it's one point of Harmony, or rather one point of Vitality, whereas the Poison was going to be completely useless. So uh, we do already control the Beast, unfortunately, so this is not going to trigger Harmonies. But it is just a, a big point slam. So in that way, it does put pressure on them, and it does give us the last chapter of our scenario, which, uh, I mean, all these cards are bad <laughs> uh, in terms of their abilities, but they do proc harmony because that is what the whole thing is about, is that whenever we uh, tr trigger that last chapter of the scenario, we are guaranteed to get an existing Scoia'tael bronze unit of a category that we do not yet control. So we have a pretty sizable lead here. They have, though, instilled some cultist abilities. Not on Ramon, though. So I don't know if their finisher's gonna be big enough. It is not. We'll hold on for the 2-0 win, even when we're a card down. So there's a look at a new Scoia'tael deck for the Trial by Fire seasonal event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and make sure to stick around for more seasonal event deck guide videos, as that's what we do here on this channel. And if you're interested in learning more about the new cards and how best to play them, then check out the video that I released a couple of days ago that shows you all of my thoughts about the best ways to put those cards to good use. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.